Good morning. We were looking at a ducted system where we had a premixed flame at a given location and then we uh, solve for the stability of the problem. So, uh, in this case we had a flame here and we had a wave system on the left side and another wave system on the right side and we actually tried to set up the acoustic propagation equations on this side and also on this side which is our classical solutions and when he, we had a boundary condition which is uh, closed here and this was opened here. Now and, and we solved for the eigenvalues and we looked at the sign of the eigenvalues uh, we had a eigenvalues had a real part and the imaginary part and we showed that the imaginary part shows the growth rate or the decay rate and we could solve for that and we could find out under what conditions you would have growth under what conditions we had uh, decay and all this assumed a simple n tau model and uh, of course we plug in values of n at the moment but in reality n and in, in, in reality the n and tau will come from some physical modeling based on the uh, fluid mechanics and combustion principles which we did not account for but assuming that you know that then we can actually do this modeling. Now having done this uh, uh, come this far I will give you a homework problem on active control. So uh, a, a very simple uh, problem. So what we wish to do is to uh, replace one of the boundaries. So in this case it is easiest to replace the, the closed boundary with like a loudspeaker. So let us say we We keep a loudspeaker here. And we make it vibrate in some manner which is convenient to us or which is such that it will make the system stable. So uh, how, how do we do, do this that is the question. So uh, if you if you look at our calculations we had solved for the imaginary part of eigenvalue and we had a. Um, Suppose we had a imaginary part which is giving a positive growth rate then we have to uh, make this system such that this loudspeaker will input something and therefore that would make the imaginary part change the sign flip the sign and a growth rate will come to a decay rate. So that is the idea. Now in the, in the limit of things if there was no flame and if you put in a loudspeaker the oscillations will grow right. So if, if you do not have a flame and if you have a duct it is a neutrally stable system there is no driving no damping. So you put a loudspeaker it's, it can grow but uh, on the contrary if you put the loudspeaker and if you play around with the delays then it is possible to make the system stable and that is what we are going to work on. So uh, a uh, yeah. yeah. Release at some time and sometime later, it will yeah. have different effects. Yeah, or, or the, the phase, I mean, phase, yeah, I mean, price going up or coming down or in many flats. So, you can adjust the but phase. How do we know a priori when? Yeah, that is what the homework is about. So, you can. <laughs> uh, so, uh, the, uh, so, this is like a very simple way of having an active control. So, what we mean by changing the sign of the imaginary part of eigenvalue there is a formal name for this anybody know this pole placement pole placement control. So you have poles and you push it to the other side so it is called formally in control theory it is called pole placement control uh, I am no expert in control theory and this uh, pole placement is the most in um, um, rudimentary form of control in uh, practice there are very advanced controls such as adaptive control, LQG control and, and, and so on and so forth but we will we can still in the classroom we can do simple small things and we try to illustrate things. So there are four key elements one is the uh, microphone which will sense because if you have to do some kind of active control you have to know what is going on to control anything if it is a feedback control that means uh, it is like if you are studying well. I need to I do not need to do something but if your grades are going down then I have to uh, teach better or, or yell at you more loudly or something like that. So it depends on your performance what my intervention 
should be if everything is fine then maybe it's better to stand back and watch everything so it's the same way you have to put the microphone for example if everything is stable and then you turn on the loudspeaker and then the sound will come up right we don't want that so we have to know what is happening so we definitely need a microphone so this is and uh, we need a delay generator as uh, rajesh pointed out we need to be able to adjust the time at which the sound comes in and and, and so on uh, or the phase of the sound it's not like we are not having pulses we are having continuous sound wave so it's more like adjusting the phase and we need a amplifier audio amplifier and four we need a actuator so Uh, actuator would mean uh, something will which will actuate and make sound. So in this case, in the screwed example, I was saying we can use a loudspeaker. Yes, and we. Yeah. The problem is, I originally had a problem where I had a closed end here, and I was having let's say instability under some conditions. We we showed for when the instability can come for fundamental mode and when it can come for third mode. So I have an unstable system. Now I want to make it stable. actively actively means i interfere with it meddle with it passively would mean how would i do it passively first maybe that's a good question to ask say something and have some dampers yeah have some have some dampers or uh, on another thing would to do would be like where there is a pressure maximum put a hole and then so atmosphere tries to bring the pressure there to atmosphere but you want to maximize there is a conflict or yeah i put a uh, put a damping mechanism i think uh, or maybe yeah i, th I think those are the uh, or, or move the flame location that would be another possibility i mean so you're not uh, so that is passive control you you do something you're not interfering see everything is active you have to act to move it or to put a damper but we are not acting in the time scale of oscillations but uh, active control would mean that uh, you have oscillations of the order of let's say if you have 100 hertz oscillations the period is 10 millisecond and within the period we are meddling with it as it is uh, going on actively messing around with things so that's uh, more like it so uh, so i want to uh, actively mess around and the any elementary control things would say that we need a a plant right that's the if i speak the control jargon as uh, so a plant is our uh, plant doesn't mean some big uh, cement factory or something it just is the uh, device which are trying to control which is our thermoacoustic system we need a sensor sensor is to find out what is going on if you do something without knowing what is going on i think then you are doing wrong things for example you all came late the two possibilities one is you all slept or maybe the previous professor left you late so if i uh, uh, assuming that you are let's say you are studious students and the previous class you were aggressively taking notes and listening to everything pro the professor was saying and you come here and i start yelling at you how dare you sleep till 9 o'clock uh, then actually you will be very upset and uh, and i'm really spoiling whatever motivation you have but on the other hand if you are actually sleeping and if i assume that you were really working hard and all that and then i say okay wonderful how wonderful guys you are that's also bad because then i am um, 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 appreciating your uh, sloppy behavior so i have to sense what is going on so without sensing any intervention would be i think it's like you go to sometimes you go to hospital and and i want to tell the doctor the problems but if, even as i have spoken about 15% of the problems they are writing prescriptions i mean you must have had this experience they don't want to listen to you i mean they know everything about you uh, they are not sensing so we have to have accurate sensing to be able to intervene right that, that's the correct thing and and, and then of course our model should be right we need a model and then in the model we put a controller and or in a, if it is a hardware you put a actual uh, uh, a speaker and so on so we need a, a controller and the controller strictly means the algorithm which controls so you 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 uh, you have a you get a equations you work out in this case because we are doing the problem on the board and then you say okay we have to have the uh, actuator vibrate at this phase delay and so on so that that, that would be called controller controller doesn't really physically mean some box which controls but it's that control action which or the control uh, which is uh, what is uh, generally referred to as controller 
and then there is the actuator. So, actuator is like in my case the previous example of uh, you coming late and I am screaming at you the actuator is my uh, vocal cords and, 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 and so on. So, that is the actuator. Uh, so, you have to have a sensor actuator and a plant and, and that is basically it and you should actuate uh, correctly. So, if you for example, you, you came late today, but tomorrow you come on time, but instead of yelling today if I yell at you tomorrow, you will think that okay, you, I came in time and this guy is yelling at me, so there is something wrong and then you will lose motivation. Whereas, uh, if I yell at you maybe oh, I am slackening, so I should work hard. So, the timing is very important, uh, for example, everybody goes up and down, so when you are um, messing up, I should get aggressively uh, yelling at you and when you are doing well, I should say oh, wonderful, keep it up and, 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 and so on. So, that is the modern management strategy. So, it is the same kind of thing uh, and, and the timing is quite important because if you uh, I'll give another example, I go to the park with my daughter, uh, I used to go now she is a little grown up that she does not want me to come with her anymore. So, uh, she is swinging and uh, I uh, sometimes she asks me to push and I have to push at the right time. If I, I can also push at the wrong time and I am sometimes wanting to go away and I push at the wrong time and the swing will come to stop, but the same pushing action at uh, another time uh, within the cycle will actually keep the swing going even further. So, everything uh, everything is about timing I think in life also. Uh, uh, so, so we have, so microphone is sensor, you can use a condenser microphone or a piezoelectric actuator any such thing. Uh, so, this delay generator and amplifier together will make the controller with and it should do whatever we are asking it to do and this is the uh, actuator which is the in this example which is the uh, loudspeaker. We can also have a piston oscillating and in uh, of course, in a combustor it would be very awkward to put a loudspeaker in a combustion system. First thing the sound levels are very high that loudspeakers cannot take it and, and the se uh, second thing is loudspeakers do not have the author I mean it, it does not produce that much sound the level that is required to stop these oscillations because they are very loud. So, perhaps it is better to have like I mentioned earlier secondary fuel injection, you inject fuel such that the heat release coming out of that is out of phase with the pressure and then that creates acoustic damping. Yes, Anviksha you had a question. Yeah, so this is a uh, very uh, the question is in terms of active or passive control which is a lesser costlier option. Uh, of course, costlier option and uh, not costlier option depend on what are the consequences. So, it is a very deep question what you are asking. So, uh, if you were to put an actuator first of all you have to make a control law and, and you have to do some analysis then you have to put the hardware mount the hardware it should be tested and it should work for so long if it is a combustor it should work for like several years without. Uh, this power they are, they are sitting in a power plant which makes power let us say or, or in an aeroplane and it should work for several years without having to uh, do anything at all and so it should be very reliable and anytime you ensure reliability it is expensive and so on. Uh, uh, so, um, in fact actually in to look at the simple case of land based gas turbine engines uh, I think there have been some cases where they installed the active controller, but as of now to my knowledge it, it does not exist because reliability is an issue and to ensure reliability is very expensive and um, and I think the engineers and the managers would go for reliability, simplicity and, 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 and so on. Now, if you speak to a control guy he will say that yeah I mean passive control is not effective, it will be effective only for one kind of thing at one kind of frequency and so on. So, they would advocate active control, but uh, so active control is very good, but can you ensure 100 percent 100.00 percentage reliability and marginal economic cost only. So, if you can and if it is necessary for example, you know that uh, we are flying unstable aircraft without any problem, but you would not put that kind of uh, uh, see you want to make the aircraft unstable because you want to be able to control it very well. So, that why do you want to control it very well because you want to out maneuver the enemy. So, it is a circumstance everything is in the context. So, there it is a pressing need to outdo the other guy okay. and, and then you have to have a proper control loss and, and so, the system should be well understood and it should be very reliably be controlled. Uh, so, if uh, that is not possible or in a, a commercial airplane you have autopilot and, and, and so on. So, there the system is understood well enough and it is repeatably performing without any problem and the cost does not seem to be going up and so on. Uh, so, 
uh, I mean people, the managers have uh, confidence in it. Uh, so if you uh, if you have that, then so so it, it depends on cost means if if you can get it to work somewhat, like fifty percent okay, then cost may not be what what much. If you can make it to work eighty percent, cost will go up. But if it's ninety percent reliability, it should work ninety percent time. It'll even go up. If it works, should work ninety nine percent of the time. It'll even go up. It will work one hundred percent of the time. Then the price will be very very high. So the, then the passive control, of course, it also has its price because you put into surplus um, fifty hertz oscillations. It won't do anything with the two hundred hertz oscillations, and it won't do anything with the five thousand hertz oscillations. Then you have to put something else in, and then it's also psychological because I mean whether you uh, if you told uh, the passengers that the airplane may be <coughs> running at fly by wire or something, then they may not get into the airplane. It, so I think the managers think that it won't be reliable because if uh, the thing shuts down, uh, if, if you are uh, and, and then you have to replace, it takes uh, like several hours to work, and then that creates a lot of problem because the power stations are op operating at capacity, and then you have to shut it down for several hours, and and they don't want to get into this. So as of now. Uh, it seems like active control is perci uh, perceived as a expensive option and uh, reliable, but reliability again, how much reliable? So if I, if you would come to class uh, reliably, that means whether you're coming exactly at 9:00 or some people come at uh, 9:05 and some come at 9:00, 9:08, some other people come at 8:59, and of course you, you think about the effort they are putting. The, the fellow who is coming at 8:59 always or 8:58. Uh, they are actually concerned right from the morning. As soon as they get up, they think, "Okay, I should be in here in time." So they are paying a price for their reliability. Whereas, okay, oh, there is a class now. I have to just go there. So it, by the time you come here, it's 9:08. So you are not having to pay the price in terms of paying attention to this effort to come here in time. So anything involves um, effort. Uh, now, so th th this is on, on on basic thing. But even beyond that, the other questions like, is the system really well understood? And, and then again, anyone who make a theory will say that this theory is wonderful and everything is understood, and everybody else may not believe in believe in it. And can you actually reliably uh, implement it? So I uh, I have spoken to many engineers in, uh, running these things. So thermocracy instabilities are really a problem in solid rocket motor, but it's just not amenable to active control because I mean a motor <coughs> fires for. Eight seconds and hits the target or something like that. I mean, you and there's no possibility to put any active control there. Liquid rockets, perhaps, but it's not done yet. And uh, uh, there, there may be a possibility, but it's all passive. In uh, land-based gas turbine, they have done it. Some of the big companies, but uh, it's all taken out. I think it, it's not there anymore. And uh, so I think in aeroplane engines, it could be maybe 20, some years later it may come in because uh, I think if it comes, it will come first in aeroplane. Engines because uh, see you push the combustor performance beyond some limit. I mean uh, there is an envelope is uh, pushed by is is created by various factors. One of the factors is the uh, instability. So if you push too much into it, uh, uh, that is if you increase the loading too much, it may go unstable. So there is a limitation which is provided by this, and then if you can overcome that and give the pilot a extra advantage, then I think uh, people will go for it. But you have to prove that. We will bring the aeroplane and the pilot back safely because you spend billions on both this, uh, the person and the machine. So it's a very complex factor driven by technology, theory, practice, and economics, uh, and so on. That the land-based people say that the actuators are just not reliable enough; that they can't work several years without having to uh, be able to uh, uh, to be able to replace it, and they just don't trust it. So these are the conditions now, but. Suddenly, it can change, but it's very hard to uh, predict long-term technology uh, changes. In the short term, only we can say. Uh, but these are some of the issues. So there's no easy answer for this, and the answer depends on who gives the answer. Also. Okay. Any any supplementary questions? No. Okay. So uh, so we'll uh, draw a block diagram for the controller with these components. So there are the Combustor, which in the uh, control jargon would be the plant or something like that. So, so the, you sense the pressure fluctuations. Let's say so. So we have 
So let us say we sense P at A comma T. Then we have a time delay generator and amplifier, and we will have a transfer function for it. This feeds into a actuator. Which will impose velocity fluctuation somewhere. In this case, we can keep the loudspeaker wherever you want. In this case, I have just kept it at n. So, impose velocity fluctuation. So, we have a combustor, we sense the pressure in the combustor somewhere. So, let us say around the flame with a microphone and then we look at the signal and delay the signal and also amplify it adequately and what is adequate we will see and, and then uh, we have to have a relationship for the uh, uh, how much you amplify and how much you uh, phase shift and then you get the signal and uh, force the actuator which will impose some velocity fluctuations because any loudspeaker will actually here impose a velocity fluctuation but as I told you there can be other kind of uh, actuators also and then you uh, feed it back to the combustor. Here in this case we do it through the uh, uh, end, uh, the micro uh, loudspeaker at the end. Okay. So, this is the uh, what is called the block diagram, is this clear. <coughs> so, if I uh, go back here. So, I locate my microphone somewhere here and then I have to have a time delay and then you have to have a amplifier and this is our actuator which is the loudspeaker. So, this is the system. So, we will proceed to make a simple mathematical model that is our mission. So, uh, we need to find a relationship between the velocity here and the pressure that we sense here because we are sensing this pressure and inputting a velocity based on that by uh, some kind of delay and some kind of amplification. So, those things can be, so we, we define a control transfer function delta which is a which is time varying velocity created by the speaker divided by time varying <coughs> pressure that is sensed by your sensor. Of course, you have to be careful to put the microphone at a place where you can actually measure pressure because if you put it at a pressure minimum, a pressure node, then you may not sense anything. Right? I mean you have a standing wave and some places your large amplitude, some other places your small amplitude. So, you have to locate the sensor wisely. Okay. Yeah, you had a question? Yes. You wanted an example for the active control. Yeah, that is what I am doing. Example means as in passive control example is dampers. Yeah, this is the example. I mean you uh, like anti sound. You you have uh, uh, like so I have sound in the system and now I put a loudspeaker in there and try to 
shut down this arm. So this is active control. I mean, I didn't quite understand. Yeah, loudspeaker is an example. Loudspeaker is an example of not of active control. It's an example of an actuator. But you are wanting. Well, you can state your question. Yeah, I don't. I mean, as an example, an active control system. As in, the number can be number is an example of passive control. Yeah. So this is like a time delay based controller. So this the whole system together is active control. Okay. So this is delta and uh, it is a complex quantity. So So, the crux of the matter is the boundary condition at x equal to 0 is now different. Okay. So, this uh, boundary condition is not closed end anymore, it is a relationship between the it is some other velocity. Okay. So, we will look at B C at x equal to 0. So, U of 0 comma t equal to minus 1 over rho 1 c 1 a e power minus i k 1 a minus b e power i k 1 a times e power i omega t and uh, p we have to remember that uh, the sensor and actuator need not be at the same location. So you can choose to keep your sensor wherever you want. You can choose choose to keep the actuator wherever you want. Uh, that's your choice. Okay. So here I am deliberately choosing a location which is different. P a comma t. What is P a comma t? It's a plus b times e power i omega t. So and I have a relationship between delta. So P one delta is u one, right? So that's the relationship that I should uh, calculate. So uh, P1 delta would be delta times e power i omega t times a plus b equal to minus 1 over rho 1 c 1 times rho 1 c 1. So this is to make sure that delta is non dimensional so the rho 1 c 1 factor will go away times a e power minus i k 1 a minus b e power plus i k 1 a times e power i omega t which you can cancel and this will also go. So, you will get a e power minus i k 1 a minus b e power i k 1 a equal to minus delta into a plus b. So, you will have a times e power minus i k on a plus delta plus b times delta minus e power plus i k on a equal to 0. So, this is the new relation. So, we had 4 equations and there was an equation 1 there uh, which was a e power minus i k on a plus uh, minus b e power plus i k on a equal to 0. We will have to replace that with this condition. So, this is the new boundary condition at x equal to 0. So, if you assemble the new matrix you will get I will just write the answer.
we have to uh, th this is the four equations we have three of them are same only the one corresponding to the boundary condition at x equal to 0 where I replace the hard end by the actuator is changed and now uh, 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 you have to uh, so this will be like this matrix times a b c d will be 0 so determinant of the matrix which is what I have written here should be 0 and that will give a equation which relates the Eigen values. Now we want the Eigen value such that your growth rate is negative. So now, so you will get a relation, a dispersion relation for the Eigen value just like you had uh, derived on earlier when this controller was not there right. I mean earlier this delta was 0 and then we could derive a relation right, everyone has very blank faces. Can you see your notebook and check if such a relation was indeed derived? Do you see it? You, you see this matrix and all that? No? Okay. Yeah, okay. At least the PG students look like they have seen it. Uh, so, uh, uh, so, similarly, we can get a relationship for the uh, and now it will involve delta and n. Of course, n is given, tau is given. Uh, so, you will have to tweak delta such that imaginary part of omega gives decay rate not growth rate. So, that is the idea. So, I leave it to you to do it as homework you can work out controlling the first mode and the third mode and we can discuss the results some two classes later or something Wednesday we can discuss the results. But please do it otherwise all the discussions will be uh, pointless actually. Okay. Sir, yeah. I, I do not know. So, you have to work it out. <coughs> so, what you would do is uh, you can actually solve for a, b and c in, in terms of d or something like that and then you plot the standing wave and uh, uh, and you have the jump conditions and all that. So, you, you plot the Eigen function and let me know what the answer is maybe on Wednesday you can show me. So, this is a very important question. Uh, so, if, if you are if your n is very small and your delta is also equally small you would not be changing that, but if your n and delta are big you may actually be turning that changing that. You can also work out this question without the flame which is probably what you are interested in uh, will uh, if you put a driver will it change the standing wave. I think it depends on how much you drive. So, uh, can you volunteer to work the solution out and show this if you need help you can see me I will explain to you how to do that okay. It is a very uh, brilliant question, thank you. Any other questions? So, is it clear what the homework is? Okay, it is clear to Vishnu. Cool, it is peaceful, right? Yeah, okay. So, it will take some time perhaps to figure out which is which, but yeah. So, please do this and come back, then we will discuss. So, I will take a, uh, a momentary break from this, but we can discuss this on Wednesday. So, this uh, n tau model that can also be uh, like you are relating the velocity uh, and the heat release rate. So, a control person would say that there is a transfer function between heat release rate and velocity. So, uh, I mean we call it n tau model, but that is what basically it is. Now, these are all this analysis was done in frequency domain right, not in the time domain. We actually solve for modes and we are solving for one mode at a time. So, this would be called modal analysis right in, in frequency domain that is what we did. And we did. We did modal analysis. So, there is a alternate set of analysis in the time domain. So, the way things are set up in frequency domain it kind of forces you to do stability of modes and in, in time domain you are not constrained that way. So, you can solve for all the modes together and uh, <coughs> but essentially frequency domain analysis is much more simpler and easier to do than time domain analysis. So, which is why people prefer to do that, but when you go to time domain you can actually afford to do a, uh, a known model analysis. Uh, 
uh, will this be of any use we will have to analyze and see. Now <coughs> when you uh, so all that our theory did we did basically linear stability analysis in the model, model framework. So we can get a frequency uh, the periodic component and the growth rate uh, that means the oscillations are growing indefinitely. But in reality uh, it will not nothing will grow indefinitely. I will give you example suppose you somehow uh, got a new job or something like that or you found a way to get new income. In the beginning the income will go I mean you are getting a lot of money and you have not figured out ways to spend it. But soon you will know a new things to buy a iPod and I do not know what are the uh, iPad, iPhone and all these things will drain away the phone and in case you are a uh, humble fellow you do not spend all these things you do not need all these things your friends will find way to spend your money they will pile on on you or your family would uh, take the money and blow it. So eventually what happens it, it your, uh, your uh, growth this initial exponential growth it will take some time for your uh, family members or friends to figure out that your money. So at that time you will have this exponential growth your wife may not know that oh this fellow has so much money or your children may not know or your friends may not know. But after some time delayed tau everybody is going to or some people know in time delayed tau 1 who are close to you some other fellows will know after some time delayed tau 2 and now suddenly after some another time delayed tau 3 these people who are not close to you now will start becoming close to you in another time delta tau they will suddenly become very close and adding this tau 1 plus tau 2 plus tau 3 plus this delta tau they would start squeezing you or taking out the money. So eventually what happens to your exponential growth it will stop growing exponentially growth rate will come down eventually what happens you can have two possibilities one is you may saturate out and you may have okay earlier you are having uh, no money at all or uh, every time you had like 5 rupee 10 rupee kind of thing from that you have now 100 rupee or 1000 rupee or 10,000 or uh, billion like I heard that Amitabh Bachchan had 93 crore and still he was bankrupt I can't imagine <laughs> how you can be bankrupt having 93 crores uh, but whereas I mean I never I do not even know how much a crore is and I feel very rich. So it is all uh, perception it, it all depends on what to non dimensionalize with like if you non dimensionalize with the amount of money you had yesterday you may look good but if you non dimensionalize with uh, Amitabh Bachchan that was 93 crore now you are talking about 200,000 crore and thing, uh, 20,000 crore and all these things uh, which certain people have. Uh, so compared to that I mean uh, what is 1 lakh or 1,000 or 10,000 nothing. So it depends on uh, what you non dimensionalize with you, you see that for example you are u prime you can non dimensionalize with u bar it will look very good you non dimensionalize with c it look very small. So it depends on what you non dimensionalize with and there is a point behind uh, what to non dimensionalize with ok. So, uh, so we talked about this growth now there are two possibilities the one is ok hopefully you will saturate out something somewhere other possibility is you can <laughs> go back after some time with the exponential decay and asymptotically become very poor. So this is like a transient growth both possibilities exist and this our linear theory will not predict because linear theory deals with linear things and these are non-linear effects. For example this friend who was not close to you so he was acquaintance now he saw that you have money and now all of a sudden he became a friend now linear theory will not account for it because it is a non-linear effect because if you have to your amount of money in your pocket or a bank has to grow beyond some threshold for that guy to get uh, 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 that guy to get interested in your money. So it is like let us say amount of money is m and he will active, be active only if m minus m threshold should be greater than 0. So such things are non-linear right I mean then so this is this function so there is some function which is acting on this kind of thing. Uh, so those are non-linearities and our linear theory would not predict any of this kind of stuff. So you can have uh, 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 these things plus uh, okay now let us say you are a quiet fellow you are a poor fellow nothing happened and you are having your day to day existence at a fixed point no money and somehow barely living without making much noise and suddenly you get a lottery bang. So that is like a suddenly some initial condition happened and everything changed and when you are rich then okay all this whole same mechanics you suddenly have a lot of money 
you reach the high amplitude, then a lot of people are going to come and take the money out and eventually you can reach a, a stable place hopefully or can go to chaotic situation also. So, you can go to reach different attractors. Uh, so, <coughs> so, uh, so we, this would be called like triggering. So, in a combustion situation, so what I first mentioned about the saturation. So, we have a linear theory giving exponential growth, but this will stop being that and some kind of saturation of amplitudes happen, uh, possibly the oscillations may go to a limit cycle perhaps. Now, the other uh, thing is triggering instability. So, you have a system which is completely quiet and, uh, but suddenly it becomes unstable or I will give you another example. The first it was this, this kind of behavior was uh, noticed in rockets, solid rocket motors and uh, you have a same rocket motor, it will be fired 10 times, 20 times there will be no problem, but on 21st time let us say instability comes on and then 22nd to 38 maybe it will be quiet and then suddenly it may come on. So, it depends on the initial conditions, uh, uh, what is the specific circumstances that day uh, and, and some particular initial pulse was there somehow which made it go. So, this is called triggering instability. So, this was uh, discovered in the uh, with the uh, solid rocket motor and, uh, and uh, so this uh, things like triggering and saturation we can study in the time domain very easily in frequency domain it may not be all that simple to look at it. So, uh, these uh, uh, things um, see you, you, you probably know that uh, not those who are studying nonlinear dynamics they are uh, uh, I mean these things are described well in that. So, this triggering would be called subcritical transition to instability and uh, but this solid rocket people saw all these instabilities uh, this kind of instabilities uh, even before this language of nonlinear dynamics was well established which happened sometime in late 70s, 80s and so on. So, uh, they had their own terminology. So, I will try to connect them. Uh, so, uh, what a rocket person would say is that a, a system is stable to amplitudes of certain below some threshold value and above the some threshold value the system goes unstable. So, if you speak to nonlinear dynamics you will say that if you are within the basin of attraction of one particular attractor you will go towards that attractor, but you are if you are outside the basin of that, uh, uh, that, that particular attractor then it would not go there it will go to some other attractor. So, these are all same things, but uh, it is uh, describing the same phenomenon in different language. So, uh, if you uh, we can actually use the dynamical system theory to our advantage. So, so we write the differential equation in this form f of chi where chi is the uh, state vectors. Okay, so, you have all the variables that you need to describe system and, and you describe that. So, pressure at several different points, velocity at several different points, maybe the temperature at several different points, heat release at several different points. So, chi will be the uh, state vector. And f is a nonlinear function. Now, a linearized version of this can be so L is a linear operator. If you discretize it, you can get into a matrix. So, if you write in this form, we can use all the theories or the tools that are available in nonlinear dynamics and if you simplify it by linearizing to this system, then we can use the all the theory of linear algebra to our advantage and, and then study our instability with those things. So, the earlier framework was in the framework of acoustics, but we can now use this uh, framework of dynamical systems and, uh, and we can take advantage of those tools and see we can milk more things out of this analysis and we will see if we can calculate triggering and saturation. So, that is the idea. So, the question is what is chi? Uh, so, chi is the state vector. 
So, what it is depends on your view. So, you can think of it only as acoustic pressure and velocity or uh, as uh, I think some of the discussions we had earlier, we can think of a combustor like a flame in acoustic field as a two scale problem or a three scale problem, where you have one scale for the acoustic field, another scale for the hydrodynamic zone and perhaps some other scale for the heat release zone and so on. So, in each zone you will have to write equations and then mask the inner solution with the outer solution and then all those variables together will uh, all, all the variables together will form this uh, state vector. Okay. So, uh, now this would be quite intricate and, and so on, but that is for real. So, if you are talking about the thermoacoustic engine, you will have the acoustic field, but there is also a complex hydrodynamics going on in the stack which you have to model. So, that will also enter this uh, uh, enters the state, ve uh, state vector. Now, if you are going to use a transfer function approach, what you would do is we will write uh, like n tau, you say q prime is going like n times velocity at t minus tau or pressure at t minus tau, but here we are actually solving everything in a coupled manner in the time domain. And uh, so, what my objective here is to uh, do a simple time domain model. Simple means you should be able to write the full model, write all this uh, these functions by hand and even write the linearized matrix by hand and then we should be able to uh, calculate this uh, 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 triggering and, and, and saturation and so on. So, we will make up a model problem. So, there is a difference between a model and a model problem. A model problem is a problem which you cook up which has it is based on physics, but you are constructing you are saying it is that way. Uh, or a toy problem. Again, a uh, toy problem is not in any derogatory sense as some people would take it, but toy problem would mean that it will let you play with it. It is a toy you can play, but a real model may be so expensive to run that if the run takes 6 months to run, then you cannot play with it. A toy model would mean you hit enter and within a second you have all the results. So, I'll, uh, I will I'll, uh, make a toy model, construct a toy model or, or a model problem. and uh, then we will learn to write things in um, uh, in the way uh, the dynamical system people write and we will try to use tools from dynamical system theory and uh, we will use tools from uh, linear stability theory from the uh, uh, linear algebra and, and try to analyze uh, the system. And uh, so, this triggering would be called uh, subcritical Hopf bifurcation. So, just to explain what it is. Uh, so, if you vary some parameter, let us say for example, if you have a flame and you send more fuel or something or so the more heating value more heat is released and let us say, so more more heat release by changing the equivalence ratio or fuel flow rate or something. And let us say I have a quiet condition and then the oscillations come about this way. So, this would be a what kind of bifurcation is super critical bifurcation. But I can also have a situation where everything stays quiet and then suddenly I jump up and then keep on doing like this. But when I want to come back, so here uh, I had uh, stable points all over the place and here there are solutions, but they are unstable. So, as soon as I come here, I jump up here and continue on and when I come back, I if I come back here, it would not come back, I will have to come back much more and then only it will drop back here and, and go this way. So, the hysteresis would be I come this way, jump up, go, but then I have to come back all the way here and only then I can go up. So, there will be a hysteresis, I do not know the spelling is right. So, so this would be an example of a Sub, subcritical Hopf bifurcation, where you go this way and you can jump up, but to uh, come back you will have to come back all the way. So, we will we will calculate these things and study triggering in the modern dynamic system framework that is the idea. So, next class we will make a uh, uh, we will write the equation time domain make a toy model and, and so on, but please do that homework. So, that next week we can discuss when this is over about the active control. Thank you.